This video is a sign to start fixing your broken things. Today is a story of how I brought something broken back to life with determination and a shoddy repair job. This Yeti microphone from work broke, particularly the surface mount USB snapped off from the actual board and well, it was completely unusable. Short on topic tangent, what I don't understand is why they keep the cable removable if the USB port so easily snaps off the main board. At that point, just make the cable permanent, reinforce it so this doesn't happen. I will say though, I quite like this microphone and that singular design flaw is probably my only gripe against it. Work simply, replace the mic by hitting buy on Amazon but I was determined to salvage this broken friend. With the help of you guys and my multimeter, I figured out where else I needed to divert the ground, 5 volts, and data pins from the USB. The next challenge for me was soldering because, well, I didn't have flux, nor did I have the proper soldering tip, and well, let's just say my soldering skills are, um... We are not gonna talk about this. That is a mishap. I could not remove the solder from this pad for the life of me. And a lot of my joints would have probably been easier and looked a lot better if I had flux. I do not have flux. The board definitely needs some cleaning. The little toothbrush and rubbing alcohol. This is my negative and positive data. I soldered to the test pads. Thank you, Joseph, for the suggestion. Thank you, Matt, for the suggestion to solder to R6 for my five volts. And lucky enough, the only salvageable pad was ground. So I didn't have to try and solder to this center pin on D1, which would have been literally impossible for me. Hooray! My soldering skills are, um, I have every kind of negative emotion towards this mini USB and breakout board. The ground just ripped off and literally took the rest of the ground pad with it. Although what I did realize while having it plugged in is that J1 is also just a ground pad, so I'm gonna just solder to that. Which I should have just soldered to that in the first place, because it would have been so much easier. Be right back. Editing Dora here to let you know that a lot of the footage that I filmed last year when repairing this microphone, I ended up losing because, well, my computer blue screened. I went away for a conference, came back to a blue screen. Yeah, that was not a lot of fun. So after I finally figured out the wiring and I got all of the connections secured, I knew for a fact that I wanted the cable to be permanent on this microphone, not requiring for it to be removed or plugged in again, just so I wouldn't risk it and have another USB port fall off. So using whatever I had in my junk drawer, I reinforced the new USB port. I had this like plastic plug cover that I used and well, I mean, that solution made a super rigid reinforcement for that new port, but it did end up making that section of the microphone PCB quite large to the point where it wouldn't fit back in the original body casing. For that reason, I cut it on the side and I like how it looks like a cyborg. Problem though with having this larger reinforcement zone and now my cut case is that the microphone body itself is a lot longer than the original. That meant that it needed to sit a little bit higher on the stand. So originally I had some straight brackets that I made in CAD super quick. They would hinge the microphone on the inside like this and it would tend to kind of flop over because it was too top heavy. That's where we're looking at an angled bracket. One thing I love about 3D printing is its ability to bring your ideas to life and it makes fixing things quite easy right from the comfort of your own home. The problem is not everyone might have access to a 3D printer and that's where today's sponsor comes in, PCBWay. PCBWay offers a wide range of manufacturing services from printed circuit boards, subtractive manufacturing methods, and additive or 3D printing services. So let's say for example, instead of printing my new brackets, I wanted them in metal. Here's how PCBWay can help me out with that. 
Getting started with PCBWay is as easy as navigating to their website and selecting 3D printing. Then we can drag and drop our STL file, select quantity, choose our material, let's go for aluminum, and in this case they only print aluminum with one process so it auto selects SLM. If we take a look at the subtotal, this is a reference pre-quote, and one thing to keep in mind is that this price will vary depending on your quantity or the type of material or process that you use. What if I want to explore CNC machining so I get a better surface finish on my metal? Switching over, I get this little warning that says STL files are not suitable. So we can just head back over to my CAD and export my desired file into an acceptable file format such as STEP. Then I can re-upload my part. One thing I quite enjoy about this service is that I don't need to worry about creating 2D drawings for the CNC manufacturing of my part. I can simply upload my CAD model directly and PCBWay will take care of the rest. So we have a lot more options in this case. I've selected aluminum so we can compare it to the 3D printed aluminum cost. And again, this is a estimated quote, which of course is dependent on what you select. Using PCBWay's services is as easy as a few clicks of a button, and it can open many doors for your future projects, giving you access to new 3D printing materials, as well as other manufacturing methods for your custom parts and bright ideas. Thank you to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. Here is the final result of my Franken microphone. I ended up calling it Franken mic because the bolts that are sticking out on the side of the new microphone brackets reminded me of Frankenstein. It's also like totally cut apart and made with random bits and bobs, so I thought the name Franken mic was quite fitting. At the start of this repair project, back when I fixed the broken off USB port, I ended up making these straight brackets to elevate the microphone from the stand. The problem I faced with the straight brackets, due to the geometry, I had to fasten them on the inside of the Yeti stand, so they were at a bit of an angle internally, like this. What I noticed because of this was that it was very hard to get a tightened fit on the side here, and my Yeti mic would constantly be falling over when I was using it because it was top heavy. So for this improvement, I went with these angle brackets and you can see already visually from the front, the Yeti microphone is centered within the base. It is also much easier to tighten, give it a stiff movement because now the brackets are flush onto the stand instead of being fastened from the inside. I also really enjoy how I use the green material to match the light on the microphone here. I have a bunch of this insulating slash protective foam from a few unboxings, and the one with the ridges like this particularly reminded me of the noise canceling, noise proofing panels that you can buy. So I thought, let's try and build a little sound booth foam booth for this blue Yeti. For this foam stand, I designed it in multiple pieces, and let me show you. It looks like this. The front feet come off. As you can see, I made notches in the top so that they could clip on to this bottom ridge of the back panel, and I added feet at the bottom to give them a larger surface area when they hold the stand up. There's also a foot in the back that clips onto this 
removable bracket. This removable bracket allows the main piece to support itself off of the back of the microphone here. This was the most difficult piece to model because the stand of the Blue Yeti microphone has different angles. The space is on an angle, so I took a couple of pictures with a ruler to kind of rescale and on shape, and I created this bracket. There is a rectangular hole at the base of the back piece where the bracket can just slide through. And as you can see, this bracket piece is a bit heavy. I feel like that's a problem a lot of people often run into when designing with 3D printing is that they forget the part isn't magically light, so you have to account for how big, how much material, etc. So to fix this, I created those three legs that I showed. This is what the Blue Yeti microphone sounds like without the foam booth. And this is what the Blue Yeti microphone sounds like inside of the foam booth. Now, I'm not entirely sure if you can hear a difference with or without that foam booth that I created. Honestly, what I wish I would have done was put foam in a filament box and test it with the microphone before spending time designing the pieces and printing them for the foam booth prototype. Sometimes you have to waste your time once to kind of learn how you can save it next time. And in this case, next time for a future project, I will build a quick prototype to see if that proof of concept works before dedicating any extra time to make the full-blown design. Albeit there are quite a few flaws with the foam booth and constraints at least that I was working with considering the scrap foam that I had, I wish I was able to make the foam booth larger so that I could fit better around the microphone. As you saw in some of the clips, the microphone was really crammed in there, and I feel as though that would be one of the reasons why it didn't work as well. Well, that brings us to the end of this video. I hope it was at least a little bit inspiring to start learning how to fix your broken things, because not only is it a good way to practice your troubleshooting and problem solving skills, but I mean, if you can't fix it, it's low risk because it was already broken in the first place. Plus, if it does work out, you end up with something super unique that looks cool and nobody else has. Plus, you can save a little bit of waste from landing in a landfill, which that's always a bonus. I'll catch you in the next one. Thank you for watching. Thank you